Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I'll come in to our is it 15th? <laughs> if not 14th lecture, I'm not sure, but one of the two. I'm uh, creating a hotel management system. I'll always do 40 minutes, I'll go ahead and start our timer and we go straight into our today's business. So in the previous lecture, we stopped at the level where someone could browse the rooms and when they reach on the rooms, they could be able to go and see room details like this. And then in written room details, we had put the button of what? Of book a room. So we want to work on this logic. Uh, when someone clicks on this book a room, we check if these people are logged in. If they are not logged in, we make them either create an account or uh, go ahead and uh, place the order. I mean, I mean, and view the room details and book uh, and, and book the what and book the, the room. So here we're supposed to display some message. There's a message that we are sending. Like if I try to click on book a room, okay, I was sending a message. Uh, so it is good to always show someone uh, what is, what has happened because see, I want to book a room and the system just directs me here without telling me what has happened. So what tell someone? That hey, you need to first create an account uh, for in order for you to do what to book a room. That message you already put in the session, but the problem is we are not displaying it. So let's start on the logic of displaying that message here. In case it is there, we display it here. So someone should know that okay, after creating the account, I can proceed to create a room. So let's do that. So I'll go to the register.php uh, register.php. Let's try to dump everything in the session here and we see how we can dis display that message. So if I come here and say echo and then I put uh, a pre tag and then come and dump whatever is in what in the session. So if I save, if I come and refresh here, you'll see that uh, we have some message here, some alert message. Okay type success and then it says please log in to continue with your booking you see so you have to display that so i think we can just simply go to our header our public header or is it was it public header or something like a dashboard header right the dashboard header we've already done that logic somewhere here to check if there is a message if there is one we go ahead and do what and display so let me do that as well in the what in the in the in the register in the register page so i'll come and copy this and then go to register with php and then i'll go here on top here so i want to display this thing on top here welcome to whatever i can put that message there so let's go ahead and do that so I'll come here where there is please sign into your into your account so I'll come and search for please sign into your account and then I'll go ahead and put that logic here. All right, has message has a lot message and then we go ahead and put the logic of checking there's a message there and we go ahead and display it. So let me put that one there. Let me put that there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just create to get this has a lot. We come here on the dashboard header and we see how we're achieving it. You see, this is how we're achieving. It has a lot so i can just simply come and copy this logic here okay copy that i copy that so i come back here to our register.php i recover top here i place the logic at this level you see so i check this alert message i go ahead and what and then this and display it let me first comment this so if you come and refresh you see that there's a lot message Please log in to continue to your booking. Though I feel like you can do better in this alert, even if it is even dispensable. So you see, you can go ahead and display that. So let me go ahead and unset it immediately after. So you can see, I first create these things on top here of the register file, and then I come here to the register. Uh, before the register, on top of the register, I check if there is an alert. I go ahead and display it like this. So that's how you shall tell someone. Uh, please, if you want to proceed, first create an account. So they will know. So if I if I refresh, the message will display 
for the second time it will disappear so let me go ahead and create, try to create an account okay i'll try to create an account so i can just simply come and say fake filler and then say register an account so it will create for me an account so here we are having something that checks if there is something that is pending eh? so see there is an error there we have to check properly and define key array so have to check properly okay uh this one here it is line 90 line 90 line 90 here line 90 all right so we check if it is set so the problem we are setting it before we redirect so it first redirect then unset i don't know uh, all right let's first let's first get it here let's first get here i say url equals to we first copy it we copy it okay we copy it and set it then redirect okay we copy it okay from the session then we remove the url from the session after then we direct to wherever this person came from like this so that's how we're supposed to do it i think yeah so if i refresh now to redirect me accordingly so this person the existing let's try to put another account so if i do like this i submit you see customer dashboard takes us to customer dashboard all right we shall come to that so let's try to be like booking afresh again let's try to book afresh so if i come here and say uh details so if i come here to check now check book now it will now take me to book now because i'm already logged in okay because i'm already logged in so we want to put here the form of booking all right um so we can put here now some details like uh, you're about to book uh this room and then you put the cost what and what and then you put maybe the reservation uh phone number okay so you're about to book the room x and then you put the cost and then you put the what the contact number okay so let's go ahead and then after here we're going to put here the check in we are going to allow someone to enter the check-in date the checkout date and then you're going to put the room and you're going to lock it so we're going to get the rooms of that category and put them there and lock them and then here we're going to put now the number of people or the number of adults this one that you're interested in and then uh submit uh the order or submit the request so that's what you're going to do right now that's what you're going to do okay so let's go ahead and do that so here are going to begin uh by putting the room that is going to be booked okay and then say for more details contact this phone number so let's do that so let's do that uh so I'll come to our project pro to our project and i'll go to where there is uh room booking.php room booking.php so in that room booking in that room booking it is where i'm going to put this logic so let's go to room booking.php i'll go ahead and so i've got room booking.php there we go so i have here i've checked i have the room everything i've already done that okay we checked all that we did all that so here only that we need to put um what a message okay okay so this one can leave it the way it is and then here they're just going to put the what so we're going to put the 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 date the check-in date the checkout and then the room name uh with the, its respective price and then the what the the number of people that are going to be there or the number of slots that someone needs to book for right or the number of adults so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and do that so i'll go ahead and uh, go to hotel booking okay let's come here and select the rooms that are available in this category So we're going to get the rooms in the same category and display them here 
all right and then here we're going to put the number of what the number of uh, adults so someone can say i want room one or room two room three something like that however uh since uh, the public people don't know much about uh about our rooms okay since public people don't know much about our rooms someone will come and they will not even have a choice okay so here we're going maybe you just need to put here the message that you're about to book for the room x like that we're going to put here the the message on top here and then someone will go ahead and fill this form and then you sub and submit okay so let's go ahead and do that so first of all let us first go ahead and determine what is in the room what is what the data that is in the room that we might need to display to a user so i'll just simply come here and do some somewhat okay so you can just simply come here and do some echo and then put the pre-tag and then print the room and then uh, close the pre-tag let's come and refresh here you should be able to see the data that is in the room so let's go ahead and collect this and then you see what what you might need to display to the user before they check out okay so um i save that let me come here and then we see what we might need to display to the user so maybe uh we can say maybe you want to book <coughs> so you can say you're about to book uh you're booking for the room booking for the room and then you display its name we display its name and then we put its price per, per night okay price per day or per night or okay, say price per day and then we go ahead and display the price where there's a price we put it here and then after you go ahead and put uh We put the check-in and the check-out information. Check-in. And check-out information. I think that can be enough for someone to go ahead and proceed to book. Right, so let's see how we frame it. Uh-huh. Or we can just simply do Okay, let's let's go ahead and create the status so you can say you are booking for the room and you put here the room to be bolded here okay and then put the price then you can say maybe check in And then check out. I think that can be enough for us to display to the person before they book. So let's go ahead and display it. So I'll cut that and then come to our room booking. So I'll come here where there is hotel booking. Again, here where there is hotel booking. Okay. So let's go ahead and look for hotel booking form. So at this level, I want now to go ahead and display the hotel that is being booked. So I put here P tag and then say we are booking for that room and then we display here that room like this okay 
and then display price per night and put your price and then put here the check-in and the checkout all right so there you go there we go there we go there we go now let me go ahead and refresh so you can see so i put this information in there but play, let's get a, a better place let's organize it properly okay so here a B tag, make sure that the B tag is closed, right? And this B tag there, and make sure so it is closed here, okay? And then you come and open it here again, it is closed here, all right? So I have to remove, yeah, that's fine. So let's see, um, let's make the text color to be dark. Try to put in this div on top here, maybe. All right, let's. Put here some style, give it color black, yeah, and then let's refresh. It should be able to do that to display, okay? It should be able to display like that. So, you are booking for the room, then the room shows up with a price, Set your price, price per night, and then price per night. We show the price. Only that we need to show the currency. Honey, pull and pull and pull. We need to show the currency. So let's go ahead and show the currency here. Alright, to show the currency. And then you say the check-in time. From here, eight from nine a.m. to any time, early subject, and then the checkout time, ah, something like that. So here, someone will be booking a room. At least they'll be having the context of what they are booking for. You get it. So we go ahead and uh, we go ahead and. Right, so you go ahead and uh, now put uh, the, the, the form submission, okay? So someone should be able to submit as the check-in time and then the check-out time, okay? And then we shall see how many days uh, those days are and then uh, we'll go ahead and press the order. Alright, so maybe you can put here a check-in and maybe... Uh, we remove this checkout time that can be generated and then you put here number of days okay and then put here the adults in something like that okay so we have said we're going to put here check in Did we remove checkout let's remove checkout okay sales so checkout is gone should be gone it's gone then we put here Number of days, okay. So, someone will say I'll spend there maybe two days or three days. So, the checkout time will be generated automatically. All 
and then after we go ahead and put the the what the number of people Come and refresh. Number of days, number of people. So I say maybe what two days. Number of people to be expected. You can say two or three. So you can limit that one to that size. Okay. So now after doing that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, now do the logic of uh, receiving this order. Okay. Let's do the logic of receiving the order. So, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, put the action why this order should be submitted. So, the action is going to be the same form. Alright, so it's going to submit in the same form. And the method, you can make it post. All right, so after doing so, uh, we go ahead and uh, we go ahead and uh, give these forms fields names. So this one I can give it a name of days, okay? And then we give these fields a name also. We give it name of adults and also, yeah, adults days aha uh -huh. let's give it also this name name of check-in okay or the check-in date all right so that must say let's go ahead and now proceed to the logic of submission so if i come and refresh i go ahead and select this and then select the number of days and then submit you'll see that it is submitting but you're not receiving this information so let's go ahead and receive the information that is being submitted so we can come here on the very top here after getting making functions after getting the person who is logged in all right let's go ahead and now check if there is a new data that is coming so can also get the after getting the room get the room yeah so yeah so there we're now going to get the person. I'm mean, going to check the, if there's a submission logic. So come here to register. Come here to how we did it here. Like if the, the request method is post, then I can go ahead and get the post date and put in the session, something like that. And also and set these errors. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So I'll come and put this one here after getting the room itself. And then go ahead and close this curl bracket all right so let me go ahead and dump whatever has come so i can just simply say echo and say pre-tag and then go ahead and do some printer and that is point okay so like this we shall be able to know whatever information has come from that request so let's go and refresh so if i submit you see the check-in date is there the days are there and the number of adults are there so like this you can be able to now start processing the order all right so we're going to design our order data table okay we're going to design the order table so in the order table i will go ahead in the order table i will go ahead and do what i'll go ahead and collect and and we and we determine what things do we need to record in the order right so let's go ahead and do that so we shall go ahead and say this let me create just here a new form i mean a new a new file that i'm going to do that we're going to discuss and make the room order table what you need to get about the room so we begin with um with what with the uh, with the what with the 
customer customer id that is the customer who is going to place the, the, the order so let me just come here and say other tables so let's begin let me just put here i just create a comment here a comment block and say order table and then i paste there so i want to put there we're going to collect the room id with the room that is being booked then we're going to collect the check-in and then the checkout and then the adults and then the children and then the total price okay and then the status of the of the order and then the date which was created and then the date which was updated all right so we go ahead and check um we go ahead and didn't check uh if is the uh paid or not and then you go ahead and put here amount paid uh -huh. mm -hmm. what else what else what else uh we go ahead and put let's see uh customer id you can go ahead and collect maybe the customer name as well to make sure that it does not change even if this customer's account is deleted a uh, room id room checking okay number of days a uh, number of days number of days what else do you need what else do you need i, I feel like we still need more that we can record uh amount uh -huh, payment method payment reference uh payment status i think i've already put it here it is called is paid all right payment status uh this can be order status order status okay so that is the order thing mm -hmm. so what else do we need to check here that we shall need to collect about the order okay uh let's let's look at it again customer name customer maybe customer phone and then customer email something like this all right so we go ahead and collect those things okay we go ahead and collect those things so maybe customer name i mean customer phone and email we can put them we can put them in the fields that you're going to collect phone and email something like that. So that by the time this person fields submits at least we get their phone number and email uh, what else do we need i think that's all we need about the order they didn't know when the document was created that's already there uh-huh the status check-in date check-out date all right yeah i think that's enough we can begin with that in case we come up with more fill that we might need we can go ahead and add it there accordingly so let's collect the customer's email address that's very important uh, so because we may need to send also emails so email and phone maybe so i'll come and just duplicate this column okay come and duplicate this column and go ahead and put the email address so check in can change this on customer email address okay customer maybe email email address so go ahead and collect the email address So remove this date picker thing and then say email address. So in the place order here, I'll put email address. So we go ahead and collect also uh, customer phone number. Let's go ahead and collect that as well. so there we go there we go okay let's go ahead and be like entering a fresh now come here uh oh things did not come out <laughs> all right let's see what you're skipping here it's supposed to be a row on its own eh? okay so let's let's get that fixed
email then phone number number of days okay let's let's fix that so these two in their own row put phone number out there Then I'll come and remove this petition's own independent row. I put one in the row as well. the word to book now let's go and refresh and see what we've got i think that's much more better <laughs> can do better mm -hmm. maybe i should increase on the form width and make it six and make this one One four. I think that's better. Yeah, only that. These fields will need to them to have background of white color. Yeah, it's not the best, but you can go with that. <coughs> Let's do this. the same here. Here's our inputs. So this is a row. Let us make this row end here. Right, and then we make for these ones rows as well. <clears throat> as well as this. Okay. So we have here our form. First row, second row, third row, fourth row. Yep, and then 
So you have the clothes, okay, that is fine. Let's go ahead and refresh and see what we've got. So, yeah, that much more better. However, you can do some MB, like uh, MB2, so you can be spaced out a bit. MB2, MB2. So if I come and refresh, that's much more better. Email address, all right. So let's finalize with uh, putting the. Uh, let's finalize by putting uh, what? By putting padding, okay? At start. So let's make instead of saying PY, I can just say P2. P2, and also come here and say P2. I think that's fine. Yeah, so let's go with that. Whatever it comes, you can go with that. Yeah, that's our check-in form. So you can come and modify this one accordingly to what you want. So we go ahead and proceed now. Let's try and try to submit. So I'll do some fake filler. All right, so everything is fine. I can come here and just select the date. And then I put the other phone number. Uh, this one is what? number of add a number of days to spend there then this one is number of what number of people and then i go ahead and say book now so when i click on book now uh you can see that uh, the information is there and we're able to do what we're able to uh to proceed so what i'm going to do i'm just going to do some validation i check i make sure that the date is set and the email and everything here that is set and it's invalid, it's invalid, the valid what? Valid set, and then after, I can go ahead and proceed. So let's go, let's go do that. So I'll come here on top, here when we're checking if there's submission request, here. Come there on top. Let's put there the content that we're going to validate, which is this one. Then, check if check-in is set. So I'll just simply say so I'll do if checking is set, I'll go ahead and say if checking is set is not set or it is empty. If it is not set or it is empty, then I'll go ahead and uh do the check-in error. I set it in the section fashion uh from from error from from errors and then i put it there checking is required checking date is required uh, otherwise i can collect the check in or i can proceed to another thing i check email check if mail is is set and is valid so go ahead and check for the email address if it's set and which is valid if it is not set we check if it is not set you see how our checkout is not set i just put here the not sign and say is not set like this or if it is empty i go ahead and say customer email errors and they say email address is required and then i can direct the user back okay so i do the same for the I do i do check if the email address is valid this is how i check for the valid email address say filter var and then you say you put the email and then put filter valid email that's how you check for the email validation as you can see there on the screen you can pause the video and look at this very carefully so if it is not valid i say enter the valid what email address i check for the what check for the page as well if the days are not valid they are not numeric they are less than one you can see how i'm doing it i send back the user so i think that can be enough so if it passes those levels i'll know that at least everything there is valid so you can pause the video and look at this carefully look at these not signs okay it's not set okay remember the sign of not is here and if it is empty okay one of the two then if one of those two is not correct i return back the user like this 
So let's refresh. Now if I refresh, you see that we are able to proceed up to this level. Meaning that at least everything was what was saved. Now we're going to go ahead and save this into the database. And that's where we'll begin from in the next lecture. We'll go ahead and create the account. And then, I mean, and create the order table. And then after, we go ahead and uh, submit this data on the database. That we shall be doing it in the next lecture. Okay, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Goodbye, and see you in the next lecture where we're going to proceed from here until we finish the entire what? The entire project. See you.